In this video, we're going to take a look at how to capture and analyze uh, some frequency hopping signals using a technique that I like to call capture wide and analyze narrow. I'm using a Tektronix RSA 306B, and uh, it's got a 40 megahertz wide acquisition bandwidth. So right now we're centered, as we can see down here, at 2.42 gigahertz. So this is you know, basically looking at the lower 40 megahertz half of the 2.4 gig ISM band. Uh, I've got an antenna sitting right next to my iPad, which is uh, in Bluetooth discovery mode. So these bursts that we're seeing are actually Bluetooth uh, signals. And they're a good example of some narrowband frequency hopping signals. And we could put a max hole trace on here and eventually build up the envelope of what's going on in the RF domain. But we'll get a much better view of what's really going on live by bringing up the DPX or real-time spectrum display, which does tens of thousands of spectrum measurements a second instead of 30 or 40 spectrum measurements a second. And in doing that, we can actually see that the bursts are occurring a whole lot more often than an ordinary spectrum analyzer would show you. In fact, the DPX display also has a waterfall display of its own called a DPXogram. If we put it in split mode, we can actually watch that uh, DPXogram live at the same time. So very handy for uh, looking at and discovering what's going on in a, a wideband 40 megahertz wide environment here with a very high probability of intercept of seeing these, these very short, low duration uh, signals. So let's set up to do a capture of this. I'm just going to turn off the uh, waterfall display up here and uh, turn off trace two here to clean things up a little bit. And uh, let's go add a few displays. I'll add a time overview display, which will allow me to control how much time I want to record and what portion I want to analyze. And let's add a spectrogram display or a waterfall display as well. So we'll pop those in here. And right now we're free running. The time overview is showing me amplitude versus time. And since we're free running, not triggered, we're going to just see some bursts occurring here sometimes and, uh, and other times not see anything at all. So let's set up and do a simple power trigger. Uh, so I'll go to uh, Triggered. I've got an RF power trigger looking for a rising edge that crosses through minus 40 dBm, anywhere within the 40 megahertz bandwidth. Now I can see the leading edge of a burst. So I'll go and change my analysis length here to go and capture some more data over time. So now I've got an analysis length of 100 microseconds. I can see that one of these RF bursts is just under a 100 microseconds long. And if we keep bumping that up, we go up to let's see, 500 microseconds. Now I can actually see I'm capturing sometimes two bursts in that same time period. Now we can stop this, for example, and we can take a look and see I've got you know one of the bursts here and one of the bursts here in frequency. In fact, if we add a marker in here, I can move that marker up and down and actually see down in this corner down here uh, those different spectrum traces that are stacked up using looking at that red trace. So we can actually see this frequency over there, this one here, and if we move over here, we'll see another one pop up over there. Okay, so this allows us to kind of see what's going on. Uh, in fact, this burst right here in, uh, in time is this one in frequency. Or if I move up in time to this point here, this burst here in time is that burst in frequency. So let's bring up another interesting display here. I'm going to go run this again some more. Let's bring up a frequency versus time. This is kind of like an FMD mod. Uh, it will show me frequency deviation versus time. And here I can actually see you know, where I, this is looking over at the 40 megahertz span. The center of that is right here in the center. And we can actually see these bursts occurring at the different frequencies. Let's stop this here for a second and take another look at this. Again, everything is time correlated here, so if I move the marker across, I can see the spectrum, I can see where I am in the spectrogram, see where I am in the time domain, anywhere within here. But what's interesting is let's take a quick look at uh, one of these hops. Okay, I can right click and say zoom, and let's zoom in vertically and horizontally around this particular signal. Okay, in fact, let's zoom in vertically a little bit more here, even a little bit more. Maybe I'll pan this over a little bit. We can actually see there's some uh, FSK data on here, but it's pretty noisy. We really can't see what's going on. And the reason for that is because we're still analyzing over this 40 megahertz bandwidth. So what we can do 
is uh, re reduce the bandwidth that we're making this measurement over. So within the frequency versus time settings, we can go to uh, where it says measurement bandwidth. Right now it's linked to the span, which is 40 megahertz. If I uncheck that box, I'm going to use my down arrow to drop that down to say 2 megahertz. So now I'll make the measurement over 2 megahertz. However, uh, by default, all of the analysis is done at the center frequency that we've set the analyzer to. Now, uh, we, can we can undo that as well. So if I go to the analysis control panel, I can uncheck this box here, which unlocks the center frequency of the spectrum analysis uh, from the actual measurement frequency that we're going to do in other displays. So this will now allow me to analyze narrow uh, on a wideband capture. You'll notice that we've now got this uh, kind of icon here, or display aid, in the spectrum displays. The center bar of that that's going vertically, that's showing me what my measurement frequency is. And then the trapezoid down along the bottom shows the measurement bandwidth. Remember, remember I reduced the measurement bandwidth to 2 megahertz. So that's showing essentially that 2 megahertz bandwidth uh, filter. Now, if I go and center that, uh, over, uh, say, let's see, we're over on this hop right now. So let's go over to this hop right here. If I center that on this hop and replay the existing data, let me auto scale it here. Now I can actually see it's a much cleaner uh, display going on in here. I'll right click and zoom in again. And uh, we'll just uh, zoom in vertically here and then zoom in a bit horizontally. And now we can actually see the actual FSK data that is being sent on this particular hop. And that was impossible to see before because of all the noise, because we had such a wide analysis bandwidth. So for example, if I go and move this analysis window now over to this hop over here, which is occurring at a different point in time, I'll replay the data there. Now I can actually see that frequency hop over here more clearly. So if I zoom in on that horizontally, and vertically, very easy to see the FSK data that is in that particular frequency hop. In fact, if I move the marker back into here, now I can walk my way through that one as well. So this is a technique, again, that I like to call capture wide and analyze narrow, where we can acquire a 40 megahertz swath of data that might contain many frequency hops of narrow band signals. And then we can do our narrow band analysis uh, very easily. This technique Neat can also be used when doing modulation analysis and things like that. So a very powerful uh, type of technique that is available in all the Tektronics uh, real-time spectrum analyzers ranging from the very low cost RSA th through the top of the line uh, benchtop instruments. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. I will look for you next time. Thanks again for watching.